in the previous lectures, we have learned about responsive design and the bootstrap grid system. We have seen how the bootstrap grid allows us to design responsive websites. It's time for us to move on to the next exercise. We are going to work with the index.html page that we created in our previous exercise and apply the bootstrap grid classes to make it responsive. Taking a quick look at our web page in the browser, we see that it is still terrible, although the fonts have improved a little bit. And we are now using the Bootstrap's default fonts. Let's now try and apply the Bootstrap grid classes to index.html to improve its layout. Going to the index.html page, let me quickly draw your attention to this particular line in the index.html page that we included already in the previous exercise. I had referred to this line when we were talking about the Bootstrap grid system. So here we see that we have specified the meta tag with the viewport and the content with uh, width as device width and initial scale one and shrink to fit no. So this meta tag allows us to make our web page responsive by looking at the viewport tag there. Moving ahead to the next step, we're going to roll down to the body of this index.html page and then look up the first div that comes right below the header tag there. To this div, we're going to apply the class container. We have already learned about the container class in the previous lecture. So uh, once we apply the container class, then Taking a look at our web page, we see that part of the content right there has already adapted itself. Look at the difference between the content up here and the one below here. Now, this content down below here is in the footer of our index.html page, and this content is in the header. But the content on the middle is the actual content of our web page that is inside the div to which we applied the container. So applying the container class, you can immediately see that the width of the page within which our content is laid out has now shrunk and then you have some extra space left on either side. So with this container width being a fixed size container, our content will be fixed to this particular width on the screen, leaving enough margin on either side as white space. Let's apply the same container class to both the head, header and the footer also, and then see how the content changes. Going back to our web page, what I'm going to do now is for the inner content here, the, the inner div inside the container, I'm going to apply the class as the row class here to this first one. And I'm going to simply copy this and then apply the same to the second div here, which is lined up with the div, and also scroll down. And then to the third div here, I'm also applying the row class here. So now the content inside this outermost container class is now divided into three rows. So whatever is inside here will be one row. Whatever is inside here will be the second row. And the one here will be the third row. We'll later on apply the column classes to these. Let us now move to the header um, in our um, index.html's body. And to the header, I'm going to apply a class called as Jumbotron. The Jumbotron component allows you to set apart the content inside the Jumbotron from the rest of the page. We will see the result in a short while when we look at the resulting web page. Now, to the div inside this header, I'm going to apply the class as container so that whatever is inside the content will be now constrained by the container width there. Similarly, moving down to the footer here, in the footer also, 
the first div inside the footer, I'm going to apply the class as container. And the div inside there, I'm going to apply the class as row there to the div inside there. So this div will take us all the way to uh, this particular div here. And then the next div also, that is right below that, I will apply the class as row. So now my footer contains two rows here. We'll um, style the content using column classes in a short while. Going to the header also, I will apply the row class to the second div inside the container div here. So this div, which matches up with this, will be one single row in the header. Let's take a look at our resulting web page. Going to our web page, you can now see that the header content is now set apart from the rest inside this gray box on top here, but the content itself is now lined up with the content down below here. Now, this is the result of using the container. Moving to the footer, you can now see that the footer content is also now lined up inside the container, but the page still looks not that great. We'll now apply the column classes to uh, the inner divs now. Going back to the index.html page, we'll now start applying the column classes. So going to the header, to the second inner div inside the Jumbotron here, let me apply a class as column 12, column SM6. So here, the content in this first div will occupy the entire row for extra small screen sizes, and then will occupy half the row. So that's why column SM6 um, for small to extra large screen sizes. Now, similarly, for the second div here, although it doesn't contain any content there, I'm going to define the um, column classes here as column 12 and then column SM. So notice that here, by specifying column 12, I'm explicitly stating that for extra small screen sizes, whatever content is inside this div will be stacked below the content above here. And then for small to extra large screen sizes, this content will occupy the leftover uh, amount of uh, columns in the row for small to extra large screen sizes. So here in this case, since six columns are occupied by this content, this will get the remaining six columns there. Moving down to the content rows here, for the content here, so the, for, for this first content, which is a label here, I'm going to apply the classes as column 12, column SM4, column MD3 here. So stating that for extra small screen sizes, this will occupy the entire row. For small, it'll occupy four columns. And then for medium to extra large, it'll occupy three columns in the row. Now, so uh, the remaining part will be occupied by the content down below here. So to that, I will apply the classes as call, indicating that this will occupy the next, uh, it will be stacked below the content uh, here in the extra small screen sizes. And then I'll say column SM. So which means that this will occupy the remaining eight columns here because four columns is taken up by this one. And then we'll say column MD. So which means that this will occupy the remaining nine columns because three columns are taken up for medium to extra large screen sizes by the content above here. Now that I have defined for the first content row, I'm going to take the same column class application here and then apply that to the second um, row here and also the third content row here. Similarly, I'm going to copy this one and then apply the same to the content uh, 
columns, the content divs down below here. So now we have configured both the header and the um, content columns there. Let's now move down to the footer. In the footer, you notice that this div contains three inner divs here. So for each of these three inner divs here, I'm going to apply the corresponding column class. So for the first one, which contains links to the various pages that will form part of this website, I'm going to apply a column class as column four, column SM two here. So meaning that for um, extra small screen sizes, this will occupy four columns. And for small to extra large, it will occupy just two columns here. Then for the second one, the second div in there, I will apply the classes as column seven. So notice that I have four here and then seven here. So that total occupies 11 columns. I have left one column empty. I'll uh, come back later to apply an offset to take care of that extra column. So this is column seven and then column SM five to the second one. So this is two plus five, seven. So I still have five columns left over, which I can use for the third div here. Now, for extra small screen sizes, these two contents will be positioned side by side. And then this um, div, which contains links to social media sites, will be in a separate um, row stacked below. But for uh, small to extra large screen sizes, this will occupy, the first one will occupy two columns, the second will occupy five, and the remaining will be taken up by the social media links here. So for the third one, I'm going to apply the class as column 12, column SM4 here. So column 12, column SM4, meaning that this will occupy the, a separate um, set of 12 columns stacked below the previous content for extra small screen sizes, but for small to extra large, it'll occupy four columns. So here we have four plus five, nine plus two, 11. So one column is still left over for small to extra large. So that's how I'm going to apply the column classes to these. Now, we still have the one below here where we contain the copyright to this. I'm going to apply the class as column auto, meaning that this content will occupy just enough columns as is required by the content there. Later on, you will see that I will position this content in the center of the screen there by using yet another bootstrap uh, CSS class. We'll come to that in the next exercise. So with this, we have applied various column classes to the header, the content, and the footer. Now, this is a good time for us to save the changes and then go and take a look at the updated index.html page. Taking a look at our index.html page, you now notice how in the header, which is the Jumbotron, the content is now occupying just half of the screen there. The other half of the screen of this particular row is now left empty. Coming down to the, uh, the content rows, you see that the label on the left side occupying uh, three or um, uh, four columns, depending upon which screen size we are using and the remaining being occupied by the rest of the content. So here we have one row, the second row and the third row. And then the footer here, you can see that the links are on the left side, the address in the middle, and then the social media links on the right side. So this is for a, a medium sized screen there. Now, if you want to look at the same view for an extra small or small screen sizes, um, if you are using Chrome, then Chrome has these developer tools that you can turn on by clicking on the view developer tools. And when the developer tools come up, 
you will notice, uh, let me reduce the size here. You will notice this small two uh, windows there. So clicking on that will turn on the responsive view for these sites there. So you can see that in here, the view of this same web page on a Pixel 2 um, site, which is 411 by 731 in portrait mode, so which is uh, corresponding to an extra small screen size. So you can see how the content is laid out. So you can see the Jumbotron content there, and then the remaining part of the content down below here, and then down to the footer. So in the footer, you can see how the links and the address are laid out uh, side by side. Now reducing the screen size so that we can see how the footer is laid out here. So the remaining part, you have the links on the left side, you have the uh, address on the right side, and then the social media links down below in a separate row here, and then the copyright at the bottom there. So this is the interesting view that we see for extra small screen sizes. Getting back to our code here, I'm going to now apply the order and offset classes to this content in order to display the content in a slightly different manner. So going to the uh, content row here, for the two uh, divs here which contain the content, I'm going to apply the classes as order sm last for the first row here. And then for the one down below here, I will apply order sm first to the row down here. So which means that when this content is displayed, this content will be pulled to the left side of the screen and then this content will be pushed to the right side of the screen. So this will be ordered to the right side and this will be ordered to the left side as I explained about the order classes in the previous um, lecture. Now, similarly, for the second row, I'm going to leave it as such. But for the third row, I'm going to apply the same set of uh, order classes. So I'm going to go to the third row here and then apply the order SM last to this one. And then I will apply the order SM first to this one. Uh, and so this one again will be um, reordered such that this content will appear to the left side and this content will appear to the right side. This is just a, a way of positioning the content in a bit more interesting way. Now moving down into the footer here. Now I'm going to um, apply an offset class here. So notice that I have already mentioned that these two columns will occupy um, 4 plus 7, 11. So one column is left over. So I'm going to apply an offset one class to this one. So which means that this content in this div will be pushed right by one column here. And similarly, since I said offset one, this will be applied to extra small all the way up to the um, extra large screen sizes. And um, so that is the use of the offset class. So now that we have made the changes, let's save the changes and then go and take a look at our um, web page in the browser. Going back to the browser, you now see how the um, header is as before, but in the first content row, you see that this content has been pulled to the left side and the label to the right side. The second row is different, has been maintained just as before, but for the third row, you see that this has been pushed to the right and this has been pushed to the left. So that is the use of the uh, order SM last and order SM first classes there. Now, going to the footer, you now see that the content in the uh, first um, div here has been pushed right by one column. So, so you can see that there is one column of white space here, and this has been pushed right, and the remaining ones have been uh, formatted accordingly. So with this, we complete the changes to our index.html page for this particular exercise. With this, we complete this particular exercise. In this exercise, we looked at the use of the container, row, and column classes in order to design our web page a little bit. 
nicer. In the second part of the exercise, which will follow this, we're going to add more to try and improve the way this web page is rendered. It is still not to my satisfaction. Obviously, uh, there is still room for improvement. This may be a good time for you to do a git commit with the message Bootstrap Grid Part 1.